Hello guys, welcome back to another video. And today I've got a guide for you. It is going to be on killing lizardman shamans or shamans, however you want to pronounce it. I'm going to be showing you two methods for this. I'm primarily focusing on the cannon method, which you can use if you're on a slayer task or if you're just uh, camping them for the dragon warhammer, which is one in five thousand is what they drop. It is why lots of iron men have to camp them for well hundreds of hours. Sometimes if you're very unlucky, but I'll be showing you yeah, a couple of methods, mainly focusing on that cannon method. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. In terms of your gear, uh, you must wear Shazian Armor 5 if you do not want to take damage from their poison attack. And if you've done the Karend Hard Dory, uh, you can wear a Slayer Helmet instead of the Helmet, and that will act as a Shazian Helmet 5. But yeah, you must wear this basically uh, to do this, otherwise, you will take lots of damage and not get many kills per trip. As for the rest of your armor, it's purely up to you. I go for the range cape for the prayer bonus and the anguish as well for the range bonus, along with toxic blowpipe as the weapon. It can use an MSB or a rune crossbow, and then an archer's ring imbued. So wanting to deal as much damage as possible as the Shazian armor does take quite a bit of bonus, um, range bonus off you. In terms of your inventory for our cannon method, it's going to be mainly ranging potions, stamina potions, prayer potions, a little, little bit of food. Uh, of course, your cannon and a rune pouch as well for casting high level alchemy and bones to peaches, as well as your cannonballs and a follow door shield if you want to restore some prayer for once a day. And then an emergency teleport as well is important in case say, you get stacked out or if you're a hardcore or you just want to get out of there uh, when you're done and you don't have another teleport. There's a few different methods to get to the cannon spot. You can use the fairy ring, you can use the Xerix Inferno teleport, um, or you can just run from uh, the Karen teleport to the center. Uh, the best one I'd say is probably the fairy ring, uh, if you have a fairy ring in your POH, but if you don't, you can always use the uh, Inferno method and uh, go that way and just run south, although you may want to conserve some run on the way and walk instead. Okay, shamans have quite a few mechanics, so I'm just going to run through them now. They attack with ranged and melee. Uh, they melee you if you're in close range, so put on protect from range and stay uh, well away. The poison spell attack deals no damage if you're wearing Shazian armor or a Slayer helm with the diary. The spawn attack, uh, you have to move at least two squares away from each of the three spawns that come up. Uh, you'll see this all in a moment. And the jump attack is uh, where they'll jump and they'll land exactly on top of you if you don't move from your current spot. So yeah, as I said, uh, I will show you an example of all of these, how to avoid them and what happens if you do take damage as well. As uh, in the cannon area, it is multi-combat and you can get stacked out very quickly if you're not careful. Although if you do stick to the method that I show you, uh, stay close to the, um, the area and you should be absolutely fine and it shouldn't take too much damage per trip either. And they do drop food, so if you do mess up, you can either eat that food or use bones to peaches and heal yourself up. Um, yeah. Here's an example of me going there, so tell it to house and then fairy ring code DJR, so bring a drone and stuff from your inventory. Um, if you don't have one in your POH, which I do, so yeah, either that or the Inferno, bring it's Eric's Talisman, uh, teleport there and then run south, but yeah, fairy ring, and then run straight north, and yeah, check your blowpipe as well for scales um, and darts, just to make sure you don't run out mid-trip, it's probably a sensible thing to do. Now I'm going to be going to the western area, uh, this bit's probably the worst part of the trip that I'm about to show you now. Um, yeah, drink yourself an antidote as they do poison and uh, drink stamina dose before you go down. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to check if there's anybody in the world, but they are quite busy generally. So you want to walk here and put on protect from range and run over. As we see, there's already somebody there. So I'm just going to look for a world. And once I've got a world, I'll show you exactly um, what to do. But yeah, you may have to run all the way back up as the normalism and will ag aggro you as well. After you've found a free world, uh, you want to activate Protect from Ranged. Uh, drink your potions already if you haven't done that. So your Divine Ranger Potion, Antidote, and Stamina Potion as well. This is the hardest part of the trip, and it's where you take quite a bit of damage. Uh, you want to find that spot. This is probably the best one. Uh, Rune Light will show you. Uh, set your cannon up, and they may use the jump attack at this point, and you will take damage. But just make sure you put your cannon up, put your cannonballs in, and get it firing. And as soon as you've done that, you want to head right to the center. And this cube here, or square, um, as long as you stay all the way around this, they will not be able to use their jump attack as they need more squares uh, to do the area. So basically hug this entire wall. The spawn attack happens when the shaman pretty much shakes the ground with its arm, then it'll spawn three little minions to which you must run away from to avoid damage, otherwise they'll hit you for five, six, seven, and even tens. But um, yeah, so basically as soon as it spawns, you can wait a couple of seconds and then move. But uh, don't let them get within two squares of you. The poison attack is that little bolt you saw there. You completely avoid this attack with the Shazian Armor 5, so you don't need to worry about that at all. See another spawn attack there, quickly move away. And if you stay around the fire at all times in this area, as I said, uh, you will not take 
um, any damage from the jumps. The moment you step out, they can jump. As long as you hug this entire area, um, they will not be able to use that jump attack. And jump attack is quite damage heavy. It usually hits you for 20 at least. So um, yeah, I'd recommend, unless you need to pick up a drop, which I do there, always stay um, in this area. I did mark a few tiles as their spots where you can um, only take damage from uh, one or two of them at a time. Sometimes having three on you is quite awkward as they'll spawn multiple uh, spawns at the same time and that's when it does get tricky and when you do take damage. So yeah, I'd recommend try and only fight two of them at a time if you can. Sometimes you will have to fight three depending on how many spawns happen, where you have to move to. But yeah, kind of just focus on uh, avoiding damage as well as uh, if you're not careful. Uh, there you go, that's the jump attack. So I moved out and both of them jumped there and they'll land exactly on the spot that I was standing when they jump. But as long as I move away in time, I will not take any damage. No ball strikes either. The poison splash attack I spoke about does poison you even if you have the protection, so that's what you'll need your antidote for. And the poison stacks up quite quickly too, it hits you for 11s continuously, so that's important to have that. You can't bring a Serp Helm here, remember. Uh, you'll need either the Shazing Helm 5 or the Slayer Helmet if you want the extra range bonus and your own task, uh, if you've done the Dario that is, but yeah, anti-poison is a must. If your cannon breaks, which it will after about 25 minutes, I think, uh, it's like a safe opportunity to repair it. But remember though, the moment you step away from this area, you'll see in just a second, they will jump if they can. So quickly repair it and then move away instantly. I just got away in time there, but yeah, try to do that at probably a safer time than that. But yeah, remember to repair your cannon, otherwise your kills per hour will go down uh, significantly. Okay, Bones to Peaches comes in very handy here. They drop big bones every kill, so if you do make a few mistakes or you take some damage that was unavoidable, just uh, pick up the big bones from each kill. Use the Bones to Peaches runes for that and um, heal up and happy days. Okay, so the second method to killing these, that was the cannon method I showed you there. That gets you a um, decent amount of kills per hour, but is a lot more costly with the cost of the cannonballs, and also dangerous too, as you can get stacked out. We'll just uh, talk about that method a bit at the end of the video, but the second method is in the caves in the uh, Kevos Lowlands, or the Mulch Swamp, I think it is. So uh, make your way from the farming guild into the lizard dwelling. And here it's single combat, not multi-combat, so there's only two shamans per room, and you can just uh, kill them back to back. And it's a lot, lot safer, and there is a method you can use to uh, pretty much have your kills uh, per hour fairly similar to the cannon method, and with the safety, it's a bit more relaxing to do, don't have to constantly move. Uh, so, yeah, pick any room you want. I usually go for the middle room, that's my preferred one, I don't really know why. Uh, but as you would go in, activate your protection prayers as usual, drink your potions. Now, your inventory for this is uh, a lot less stuff. Just bring your prayer potions, anti poison, range potions, and a tiny bit of food, plus your runes for bones to peaches. Going into this room, the middle one's the one I prefer, I've marked those two tiles there. If you stand in those while you're killing the shamans, they cannot jump and use that attack. Although they will still use the spawn attack suit so when you need to, just quickly step away and move to the next tile. So otherwise, if you stand anywhere else in the room, uh, they will be able to use that jump attack and that will slow down kills as well as possibly do damage if you're not paying much attention. But yeah, much more AFK this one. You can usually sit there until the spawns come up and then you will have to move, but you don't have to worry at all about that jump attack. And uh, the other attacks that I spoke about um, are that the poison pool is the same here. As long as you've got your anti-poison on and your Shazian Helm Fireball Slayer Helm, if you've done the diary, then you won't take damage from that. But yeah, much more relaxing. Good place to do if you're on a Slayer task or if you um, just want to camp for it and not use multi-combat. Uh, again, yeah, not multi-combat, so yeah, much safer. Again, you don't have multiple shamans on you at once. Although they are permanently aggressive, I will say shamans. They will never stop uh, attacking you um, instantly, so uh, always be wary. Always make sure you've got your prayer up. And uh, you can still get stacked out here if you're not careful, and uh, lag spikes too are a problem. I've found uh, if you get a bad lag spike and a spawn that comes up, then it can uh, deal you quite a bit of damage very quickly. But yeah, much more simple method this one. So a nice one just if you're on Slayer task, or if you just want to kill them a lot more relaxingly, then feel free to make use of this spot. But yeah, hug these two tiles for the majority of the kills. The only time they will jump is when you move out. Uh, they'll have like one hit where they can jump. So they might not, they might do, but as long as you move to that tile uh, in time, then you can attack them again and they won't jump again until you move away. So yeah, that pretty much completes uh, the second spot and I'll just talk a bit about uh, the loot you get from these uh, in the next clip. The drop table for shamans is not bad actually, yeah, of course they do drop the dragon warhammer but elsewhere the normal drops aren't too bad either. 
um, Rune Chain, Muddy Rune, Med Helms, uh, Rune Warhammer, that's a bit of a troll drop in a way, and lots of rare drop table stuff. If you do kill these, be prepared for numerous Rune Kite Shields, Rune Battle Axes, uh, Dragon Med Helms. I had a shield left half, a Dragon Spear, and a Curved Bone as well, 1 in 5,000. Hope you don't get that, but yeah. Um, if you do 100, 150 kills an hour, you can end up making some decent profit with these, although you do have to subtract uh, the cost of the scales and the cannonballs. I'd probably say Shaman's perhaps 800k or so um, per hour profit. And of course, if you do get the Warhammer and sell it, that'll boost the profit by a decent margin. But yeah, not too bad to kill for just general loot, to be honest, uh, especially if you're on Slayer Task. So no need to skip it. In terms of our XP rate, so it's about 1,000 cannonballs an hour you'll probably use. 100 to 150 kills if you're in the single way area usually it's about 100 to 120 uh, depending on how quick you are and if you're on task or not if you're not on task the kills will be slow of course if you don't have that slayer helm uh, range xp is pretty good it's about 80k range xp per hour um you get some extra xp from those cannibals and then profit wise as i said between i'd say 500k and one mil probably averaging about 800k overall uh, if you do get the hammer it will boost it significantly but even if you don't they're not too bad to kill for apples and money on an iron man too uh, i wouldn't say is too bad so yeah thoroughly worth killing i think these monsters 100 percent shazy in favor is required to fight them i should have probably mentioned that at the start of the video uh, but i have now anyway so uh, get ready to uh, get hunting so that's going to complete my guide for Elizabeth Shamans. I would say, to be honest, they are a monster that uh, you learn a lot as you go, to be honest. You'll pick up the method, you'll pick up the routine uh, very, very quickly, probably within your first trip. So hopefully you'll get lucky too, like that. Yes, I got myself a Dragon Warhammer from these boys. Yeah, I was happy about that, let's just say. It's 1 in 5,000 though, so it is very rare. I think according to like the drop rate, um, you only have like a 50% chance to get it by the 5,000th kill. And I know people who've gone... There's one person I know who's gone 21,000 kills without one, but I also know people who've got one within like the first 100 kills. So, yeah, good luck on your hammer hunting if you're an Iron Man or if you're just trying to make a bit of money or if you just want to complete that collection log and get the hammer. Uh, yeah, very best of luck. That was kill count 2,800 for me. Uh, so I was very, very pleased about that. Uh, yeah, as I said, that does complete my guide. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments if there are any bits I didn't explain properly. Before we end the video, if it makes you feel any better, I then got another Dragon Warhammer about a thousand kills later while on that Slayer Task. So yeah, keep going, keep grinding there. You never know, your next Shaman kill could be the last one. But again, this method is something you'll pick up very quickly uh, after a couple of trips and you'll be able to do them very comfortably. And uh, the only hard bit I'd say is the start where you're likely to take damage from lots of jumps while you're setting up your cannon. But once you're good to go, uh, you're good to go. And depending on how many supplies you bring, uh, you can stay there for a long, long time. I usually be about bring about enough supplies to stay there for about an hour, I don't usually want to do more than an hour at a time, but if you want to bring more prayer potions, more stamina, more range potions and less food, and just rely on the bones to peaches, there's nothing wrong with that either. But yeah, thank you very much for watching the video guys, and I will see you in the next one.